Howdy. My name is Nonat, and in case I haven't made it obvious enough by the last six videos I've posted in two weeks, the remaster is here. It's exciting, there's a lot going on, but there's a very important question that you will need to ask yourself. And that question is, why does Nonat sound like his nose is stuffed with two earplugs? Well, it's because I'm sick. I'm still sick. I've been sick for like three weeks. But for real, the question you'll be asking yourself is, should I buy the Pathfinder 2E Remastered Player Core and GM Core? And this is a really important question that is harder to answer than you might think. You might expect me, as you know, a diehard Pathfinder fan, to say, yes, go out, spend $120, buy these two new books. You want them. My answer is a lot more nuanced than that and might surprise some of you. So, welcome to three reasons you should and three reasons you should not buy the Pathfinder 2E Remaster, because there are cases to be made for both sides. Since I kind of really love playing Devil's Advocate, I'm actually going to start with the three reasons why you should not buy the remaster, because I think that's what a lot of you are gonna be clicking on this video to hear. You know, a lot of people love to find a reason not to spend money. So if any of these three reasons convince you not to, there you go. But I do hope you will stick around for the three reasons why you should buy it afterwards and not leave halfway through the video. I need that watch time. Oh my God, please. I need money for chicken nuggies. But hey, did you know that I drink G Fuel? That means you should too, because I'm an influencer and we're paid to alter your way of thinking. You may not buy G Fuel this time, but you might cave next time or the time after that. You might not even cave from me. I'll plant the seed and the hundreds of other YouTubers they've paid to tell you about the excellent, great tasting, energy boosting G Fuel will wear you down and you will buy the drink. But when you do, use code NONAT, N-O-N-A-T, at checkout for 20 to 30% off your order, and I get a bit of a kickback, so you get to support the channel at the same time. Thanks! So, reason number one why you should not buy the Pathfinder 2E Remaster. 95% of the game is the same. I'm gonna put it all on the table right now. The changes that have been made, while they are very cool, and I love them, are very hard to notice. In fact, if you are playing a low level campaign between the levels of one to five, I would wager that unless you're playing something like a witch or wizard who were remastered hard, you will not notice a change. If you are playing a fighter, a ranger, or a druid, you're probably not gonna notice any of these changes. Maybe your fighter will wanna use reposition, but overall, I've looked through player core. The changes are very minor and specific. Most of the changes, remember, were made to terminology to get away from the open gaming license. Paizo wanted to move to their own orc license, so things like attack of opportunity are now reactive strike. Flat-footed is now off guard. There's a lot of little things that mechanically have not changed a single number, but terminology-wise they have changed. So if you're thinking that you're going to get a whole new game when you buy these books, you're not. A lot of people are saying, oh, they should have just called it Pathfinder 3, or this is basically Pathfinder 2.5. It's really not. More than anything, this feels like a gigantic errata. At most, I would call this Pathfinder 2.1. Like, it is the same game. It looks the same. It reads the same. It plays the same. Aside from a few little rules here and there that most tables will not notice, depending on your stance on the death and dying rules. If you don't know what I'm talking about, click here. Oh my god, that was insane. Now, a little asterisk on this reason why not. This might change over time. Player Core 2 might be a lot more different. Player Core 1 is the base rules of the game. It teaches you how to make attack rolls and spells and inventory and stuff. That's not going to change much. I don't have Player Core 2 in my hands. We're not going to see that till 2024. So it's possible Player Core 2 will change and add more to the game. But as it stands, Player Core 1 is 95% the same game. So if you don't care about that extra 5% being changed, don't buy the remaster. The second reason why not to buy the remaster, it's expensive. 
If you want physical books, which let's be honest, we are living in a timeline where physical books are a luxury, not the standard. It's kind of sad, you know, you look at the 80s and 90s when if you didn't have the physical book, you didn't have the book. But now, if you want the PDF, 15, 20 bucks. But the physical copy of the book, 60 bucks, that's brutal right now. And if you want Player Core 1 and GM Core 1 physically, that's gonna run you $120. Even just the PDFs are gonna run you a total of 40, 20 each. To some people that might not sound like a lot, but in today's economy where most people are sadly living paycheck to paycheck, $40 just for some digital books? That busts the banks, you know? Especially if you're maybe like 25 or younger, still trying to get a foothold in a job. That is a chunk in your wallet. Again, for a 5% rules difference. So if that's too expensive for you, I don't blame you. It's rough right now, and it is an absolutely valid reason for you to not want to buy the remaster. But there is another option, and that leads me into reason number three why you shouldn't buy the remaster. It is all going to be on Archives of Nethys. Every single rule change and feat update and new feat will all be added to Archives of Nethys in the coming weeks. So if you don't want to buy it, you technically don't have to. But let me put a huge asterisk on this one. First off, Archives of Nethys is not as easy to read through as a rulebook. You are not going to just stumble upon new rule changes on Archives of Nethys. If you're just using Nethys, you're not going to know which rules are different and which ones are old unless you accidentally stumble upon it and just find something like the reposition action. Additionally, what will be very confusing for folks if they don't buy the remaster but still use their old books and Nethys is that old legacy content will be removed from Archives of Nethys. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe it has been confirmed that all original PF2 content will be removed and replaced with the remaster. You will not have a remastered section and a legacy section of PF2. It is all just going to be the remaster because the remaster is how the game works now. So. That is a big asterisk on shore. All the new rules are on Nethys, but it might get a little contradictory and confusing with the books you already own. An example of this will be if you try to look up Power Attack Pathfinder 2E, you might not find it anymore because it's been replaced by Vicious Swing. Now, I don't know if they're going to code it so that if you look up Power Attack Pathfinder, it'll actually still pop up with Vicious Swing. Maybe they can code their website so that the keyword is still there, but I have high doubts they're gonna do that. So chances are, if you need to find something specific and its name was changed in the remaster, you might struggle to find it. So there's your three reasons not to buy the remaster. The game is 95% the same, the books are expensive even in digital format, and all of the new content will be on Archives of Nethys for free, with a big asterisk. But let's go over the three reasons why you SHOULD buy the remaster, because I do firmly believe that you should pick it up at least digitally if you're financially able to, because most of the changes are fantastic. So, reason number one, literally what I just said, the new content is really cool. The new class feats, all the new orientations and explanations of things are great. The new terminology feels really natural. I like off guard a lot more than flat footed. Um, the fact that things like leshies and orcs are now part of the core rulebook is really, really rad. There's new spells, things like disarm getting upgraded feels great. I have a video on that right here if you wanna check that out. They added the new reposition action, which fighters got new support for that, which is awesome. I have a video right Right here if you're interested in that. There's so much cool stuff that's been added in the remaster. Like I said, it's not a lot a lot. It's not going to change how the game works, but there are little things that have been slid in here by Paizo, and my only complaint about it is that I hope we get a change sheet of here is a five-page text document of every single change between the core rulebook and player core one, because there's so much awesome updates and added content but they haven't told us exactly everything that's changed. So you have to comb that core rulebook, the player core one, to find the differences, and that's kind of rough. But when you do find those changes, almost all of them have improved the game in some way, aside from the clarification of death and dying. I still don't agree with that. 
Unless you want like a super lethal game. Reason number two you should buy the remaster is that the layout and presentation of the rules are so much easier to digest and satisfying to look at. If you look at the original core rulebook, this thing's a monster. This thing is 600 plus pages. And the reason for that is because this was the player rulebook and the GM rulebook all in one. Now, player core and GM core have actually been split. Player core has all the player stuff, GM core has all the GM stuff. You don't need both books in one. Plus, they're both a lot shorter now, so it's a lot less intimidating. You know, you hand someone the player core book, and now it's just the ancestries, the classes, the skills, the spells, and how to play. You know, the treasure, the GM hazards and monsters, and how to run and build all that, that's all in the GM core now. That's not in the same book as the fighter class, and that's so much easier to explore, to hold, to look through. It's great. I also love the new color scheme. Green instead of the red, I think is nice. It's a great way to distinguish remaster versus legacy, and overall the green feels a little bit more inviting. It's also just cleaner. In little bits here and there, the way the pages are laid out is easier to read, it's easier to find what you're looking for, and overall it's just less of a headache, which is worth its weight in gold. I really appreciate all the work they put into fixing the rulebook because you, uh, you've heard me say it multiple times over the last three years that the weakest point of Pathfinder 2e is its core rulebook. I've said that for three years and I don't think that's true anymore. I think Player Core 1 has fixed a lot of those issues. Is it perfect? No, it's still a 400 page book. But that's because Pathfinder lends itself to insane amounts of options and insane amounts of choices, which you can't just minimize that into a small book with all those choices. Quick sidebar, because I just want to talk about this, and this has nothing to do with the rest of the video, so feel free to skip ahead if you want to, but I wanted to bring something up. There were a lot of comments on my Death and Dying video talking about how, oh, people need to embrace death. What's the point of the game without death? If your player doesn't die, you know, what's the point? There's no threat. And this comes from a very different decade of role-playing games, and that's what people are not realizing when they have this discussion. A lot of people have this argument of role-playing versus mechanics, you know, death versus story. And sure, there's something to be gained from a character dying in the story, they can die in a cool way, but you know, getting kneecapped by a goblin isn't a cool way. And I think I finally figured out, someone left a comment, I'll see if I can find it and put it on screen here, uh, but someone left a comment that really opened my eyes about what exactly divides these two viewpoints of I hate player death and players should die. Those two viewpoints have been conflicting for decades, and I finally figured it out. I guess not for decades, but for like the last 10 years, 15 years they've been fighting. And that's because, especially for games like Pathfinder 2e, you put in a lot more choice, effort, and customization into your character. You look at AD&D and even D&D 3.5 at low levels, and your level 2 fighter is going to be very similar to that level 2 fighter. You might have one different combat feat. That's about it. Maybe you're dex-based instead of strength-based. That's the difference between those two fighters. You look at a Pathfinder 2e fighter, and you've got your ancestry, your heritage, which gives you a different ability, plus your ancestry feat, which gives you another new ability, plus your background, which gives you a unique skill feat you can apply, plus all your skill proficiencies, plus your class choice, and your class feat, which for the fighter is basically your subclass, so one fighter might have Vicious Swing as a great weapon fighter, while the other one has the shield, reactive shield thingy for a sword and board, while the other one might have their completely different characters. You know, D&D 3.5, AD&D, you're both guys who walk up and attack. Pathfinder 2e, even D&D 5e, once you're level 3 and get your subclass, you're so different. You're so unique. There is a much more personal attachment to your character in modern TTRPGs than there used to be. And that is why modern TTRPG players don't like death as much. Death didn't matter as much when you had six backup characters. And if that's the game you want to play, that's fine. I'm not telling you that is a wrong way to play. But I believe because of the mass amount of customization added to modern TTRPG characters, the idea of losing them, losing that connection, and then having to build that connection through a whole new character feels and sounds exhausting. 
you know? Not only do you have to build a new character from the ground up, god forbid if you're like level 8 plus, that can take a long freaking time to make a level 8 character, but you also need to emotionally attach to them again. People are a lot more emotionally attached to their characters than they used to be, and that is because of the deep levels of customization we are allowed and able to give them. Okay, that's my little rant. I just wanted to say that because it really opened my eyes. I didn't think it was big enough to be its own video, but yeah, there you go. So I have one reason left for why you should buy the remaster. And this one might not convince many of you, but if it even convinces a few of you, I think it's, it's good. The last reason you should buy the remaster is to support Paizo. Paizo has done so much for their players, for their community, for everything. They, they do so much great work, but they're also still struggling. Paizo may be like the second or third biggest company making TTRPGs, but that is by a wide margin. You know, Hasbro's up here, Paizo's not even on screen. And that's not because they make a poor quality product, it's just sort of the way it is. Business is business. And again, Paizo gives away all their rules for free. A lot of people see that as, oh, that's a really stupid business move, but it's because they want you to play their game, and, you know, in a perfect world, you attach to that game, and then you want to support that game financially. So, even if you don't buy the remaster right away, maybe play with it on Archives of Nethys for a few months, maybe even a year, and then at some point think, hey, I've gotten, you know, 500 hours of entertainment with my friends from this game without spending a cent. I can spend 20 bucks on the PDF. Maybe even 60 bucks to get the player core and display it on my bookshelf. I promise I'll clean my bookshelf. So yeah, those are my three reasons to buy the remaster. The new content, even though there's not a ton of it, is really, really cool and well-designed. The layout and presentation is much easier, way more appealing and less of a headache. Great for new players. And you support Paizo, who has put in so much work this year, especially amidst the OGL crisis, going as far as to make their own license. I respect Paizo so much as a company. I always have, and I have not wavered in that stance. So that's all from me. Let me know what you think. Are you going to buy the remaster? Are you not going to buy the remaster? Uh, some of you commenters, I already know your answer because you have left very hilariously angry comments about how you're never going to support this money-grubbing remaster, but... You do you, man, all right? I ain't gonna judge. I'm gonna judge a little bit. <laughs> but I'm judging how you word your comment, not your decisions. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Thank you all so much for supporting the game and supporting Paizo through it all. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.